in this case we're looking at this fan now here's here's what the problem was we turned on the furnace it ran for a while and then shut off that indoor fan is not coming on so what's one of the first things I'm going to do now in the original video I said the first thing you do is you go down to the part that's not doing what it's supposed to do that's the fan motor I want to determine whether there is power coming to this fan motor or not and there's a very simple way to detect this now because I'm working with a test mule here that just come out of the junkyard I got all sorts of options there's no ductwork hooked up to this this is where the return air should be what I want to find out is if there power to the fan this is in Fahrenheit and it's showing anywhere from well there's 208 there get out in the side 155 you know there's a lot of different numbers here but the one common denominator in this whole thing is it's hot so I know there's power to the fan because the fans hot that makes it real simple there's a problem with this fan motor or the capacitor or something okay in the real world you may just stick your hand back there now you got to be careful we got some hot spots right here you know there's 120 volts there probably about more like 180 if you uh, got tangled up with the cap and a lot of others so careful on that but you've determined that fan motor is hot and that tells me the powers to it but it won't turn so what's the next thing I do I go to the fan motor and I'm not going to be able to get here uh, I have to go from the front up there and I try to rotate it well this rotates easy so there's no bearing problem in this thing this brings me to two different possibilities if the bearings are okay and the motor won't turn but it's hot then I either have a bad run cap or I've got winding failure in the motor winding failure in the motor means you got to put a new motor in it. but I do have another possibility it could be a run cap so let's explore that a little farther so if I either have a fan motor failure a winding failure or a capacitor failure which one's the most expensive and hardest to replace well obviously that's a fan motor so I'm gonna check out this guy right here that's the cap so I'm gonna pull the power some say you should short out the cap I really don't believe you need to short the cap but it's up to you if you want to you can kinda of go like this uh, you're supposed to use a 20,000 ohm resistor but I never do okay so I'm going to take that cap off there and I'm going to test it okay I've got my meter set up I've got one lead on the the cap and the uh, other one I'm going to touch on there now this is going to show me how many uh, microfarads there are in this thing okay it's showing zero which essentially is telling me this thing is shorted inside so this caps bad this was what was the problem with this uh, furnace which that's what it would have shown if it was open it's showing nanofarads in there and this is a 10 microfarad uh, cap but when I hook it up I actually have zero microfarads which means it's a dead short I could have read open like that that's what it would have shown now you need to understand that if the capacitor is shorted like this one or it's open the results you probably see down at the furnace are going to be pretty much the same the furnace with a shorted cap like this one here fan motor is going to run it starts up and runs but it runs at excessive amperage so it overheats and shuts itself off that's why when you come down there the fans not running or I could have read the wrong capacitance okay this is a 10 microfarad capacitor 
and it should show 10 on the meter or at least reasonably close to it. Uh, some say plus or minus 20. I like plus or minus 10 a little better. Now if this cap was open probably the fan motor would not start at all. That also is a condition where the fan motor overheats and shuts off its internal overload. So you're going to have the same result whether this is a shorted cap or an open cap. Now if the cap is the wrong uh, capacitance you still could have an over amperage condition. Uh, so all three of these kind of have the same symptoms but they all have to do with the capacitor. This is a fine made in Pakistan one. I don't know I have not had good luck with the foreign made caps and so I'm going to replace this cap and I should be back in business. So the capacitor was what was wrong with this thing. It had a bad cap. Now at this point this motor has been overheating for who knows how long till the customer actually come and said hey uh, I got a problem. It is possible that this motor is likely to fail soon. So whether you replace just the cap or the motor and the cap is a judgment call because that motor you saw was pretty well overheated and had probably been doing that for quite a while. Now there's an internal overload on them that shuts them off but they still get pretty hot. So that would be your choice whether you wanted to replace just the cap or the cap and the motor itself. In the next video we're going to talk about other things that could happen that could cause the uh, fan motor to fail. That's it on this one.